Nobody like you. It's nobody like you, Lord. It's nobody like you, Lord. It's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, so deliver today. Deliver today. Deliver today. Set free today, dear God. Oh, dear God, all those that are sick today, dear God. Oh, release, 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 release it this morning, dear God. Oh, let them know you haven't forgotten about them, dear God. Oh, go in the hospital rooms, dear God. Oh, go in the homes, dear God, the nursing homes, dear God, wherever someone that's sick may be, dear God. You help them today, dear God. You help them today, dear God, because they need you, Lord. They need you, Lord. So help today, dear God. Deliver today, dear God. Set free today, dear God. And I thank you for it, dear God. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. Oh, dear God, all those that came out today, dear God, the ministers, dear God, the assistant pastors, dear God, the evangelists, dear God, the deacons, dear God, and all the ones that's in the building, dear God, you look on them. You touch them. You touch them today, dear God. Oh, give them the strength that they need for the journey, dear God. Oh, strength for the journey, dear God. We need your strength for the journey, dear God, because it's none like you. No one can do it like you. I don't care what they say, dear God. It's all about you. It's all about you, dear God. Oh, so help us today. Help us today. We need you. We need you, dear God. We need you, dear God. We need you, dear God. Oh, so help the service today. Look on our pastor as he bring a word, dear God. He bring the word, dear God, a word for us that's going to prick our hearts, dear God. So I thank you for him today, dear God. I thank you for his life, dear God. I thank you for everything that you allow him to do, dear God. So I thank you, dear God. I thank you for his wife, dear God, and everything as she stand beside him, dear God. Oh, so help her today. Help her today. Help her today, dear God. Help the children today, dear God. Deliver and set free, dear God. And we'll forever give you the glory. We'll forever give you the glory. We will forever give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. From the 100th Psalm, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations psalm 100 verses 1 through 5 may the lord bless the readers hearers and doers of his word amen praise the lord praise the lord unlike him amen our new testament scripture this morning it's coming from Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. 
but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. God bless you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, hearer, and doer of his holy word. Amen. Good morning. And again, our poor response is revive us again. You'll find the words on the screens. responsibly. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. We believe that there is only one God eternally existing in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body and answer to believing prayer. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit according to Acts chapter 2 verse 4 is given to believers who ask for it. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in the present world. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is 
is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his grace with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. We come to glory by his name. We come to glory by his name. We come to glory. Glorify His name. Help me to glorify His name. Help me to glorify His name. Help me to glorify the name of the Lord. Glorify His name. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Satan, I command thee in the name of the Lord to drop your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to march right over thee. Satan, I command thee in the name of the Lord to drop your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me the authority to march right over me. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. I told Satan, get thee behind. I told Satan, 
get thee behind. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. If you believe that, put your hands together. Hallelujah. What's your name, Jesus? What's your name, God? You're worthy, Jesus. What's your name, Jesus? What's your name, Jesus? For he is the source of our strength. He's the strength of our life. Hallelujah, Jesus. What's your name, God? Lord, I will lift my eyes. To the hills, knowing my help is coming from you. be choir. Lord, I will lift. My eyes to the hills. Knowing my help.
Come on, let's give him praise if he is the source of my strength and the strength of my life. He is. Come on, let's give him the praise. Don't take a lot to praise him. All it takes is two or three gathered together in his name. Come on, let's open our mouth. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. And Lord, today we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies for life, for health, and for strength. For activity of our limbs, the ability to articulate speech and to process thought. We thank you for waking us up this morning when so many did not wake up. But we rose up early. You put it in our spirit to be in the house of the Lord one more time. So we thank you right now. We bless you right now. We honor you right now. Wherever we are at home in this place, or driving down the streets, we want to give you glory and praise that is due to your name. Now, God, we ask that you would bless us today. You've already blessed us, but bless us again. Give us the earnest of your word. Cause our hearts and minds to be transformed through your word. Let negativity be turned to positiveness. Let the judgment that people have against us be used for your glory and praise. Lord, we bind everything that is in our body that you didn't put in there. Sickness and disease. Everything that causes our body to malfunction. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak to our bodies. Thank you, Lord. We receive the healing right now. By faith, we can somebody say, I receive my healing right now by faith. In the name and the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, go everywhere where there's sickness and disease that's prevalent. We pray, God, that you would use the medicine in the hem of your garment to aid us, to heal us. For there's a bomb in Gilead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And God, as we go further into the service, continue to give me the word for this, your people. Hide me behind your cross. Cover me with your blood. Let men see the Christ, the glory that you have put in my heart, that it might revive us and strengthen us. And we'll be very careful to give you all of the glory, all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Please be seated. Thank you so very much, all of you, the Lord's people, and those who have braved the chilly, uh, chilly winds of Memphis and the cold, the cold, cold days that we've had, and the ice slicking streets of Memphis. Thank you so very much for those who have indulged us this morning, and uh, it was a quite a close judgment call, but I decided after a few things that let the, let the church doors remain open for those who want to come. I only wanted a select few to be here, and uh, thank you those others who are here today to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. I want to make sure that the saints are safe, and, and we are uh, in good passage. The main streets are clear, the main streets are clean, but the side streets and the parking lots have some issues. Uh, but praise God, we're here today. Amen. We're here today. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. And to those who are watching, it is so important today that, uh, that we are here for you. I didn't want to leave uh, the word, a fresh word, unavailable for you. So those who are watching from all over the country, even places in Africa that we get regular calls and offerings from, Thank you so very much for being a part of our broadcast and, and the word that emanates from this place. You could have chosen so many other ministries to watch, but you chose to be a part of our worship service today. So thank you so very much. Do me a favor. Hit that share button on Facebook that will cause those who are watching you on your post to be a part of the broadcast. Who can tell? That word that they hear today that's coming from your Facebook page 
may be the thing that triggers a spiritual response and changes their life forever. So hit that share button. Hit those likes. Let me know what you're watching as well. Hit the, hit the information telling me who you are and where you're from, and we'll be so appreciative if you do those things. Uh, how many of you feel blessed today who are here? Really blessed. I am. I am. I am blessed. I'm, I'm honored to God that he allowed us. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalm 100 said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All you land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and do what, y'all? Bless his name. Why are we going to bless him? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure to all generations. So I'm, I'm glad, y'all. I, I had energy. Um, I talked to Deacon Larry Jackson. I knew he had been in and out on the streets uh, in the snow. And I told him I drove out of church. He said, you know, I've been our pastor. And so I know that he had been uh, watching over the church. And a few people have been coming by just to make sure everything was fine. For those who don't know, Memphis uh, has been inundated with a lot of snow and ice now. Uh, for the past week, most people are in. And now there's another problem. The water supply uh, is so low that it is contaminated. When it gets down to the bottom of the well, sometimes the dirty water lurks there. And Memphis, I think, believe, I believe they have a boil uh, advisory for water, consumable water. And, uh, and for the surrounding cities and counties, they're okay. But Memphis, which has about 650,000 people, are draining from the same pool and uh, it's low, so that we're in a ball, in a ball advisory. But the Lord is good. The Lord is, He's still good. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign upon the throne for you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone and to you I sing this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in total, total adoration unto you. You reign, yes, you do, upon the throne for your God and God alone. Because of you, my cloud is days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than in more than anything there's a verse that I love in this song love me in your arms you're the shelter from from the storms when all my friends are gone what was God you were right there all alone I never known a love like this like this before no 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 I just want to say that I Love you more than anything. It becomes personal, this part here. I love you, Jesus. Everybody can't say that. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. More than in, more than anything. 
Everybody can't sing this part because everybody don't. But I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Just want to tell you with my whole heart, Lord, I love you more than anything. Mm -hmm. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more, more than anything. Come on, let's make a loud voice for the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, Lord, I love you more than anything. Can we sing it one more time? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you I want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. Lord, I love you. That's a good place to give him praise, everybody. That's a, that's a real good place to praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. Oh, I know the presence of God is in this place. It's wherever this broadcast is. It's okay to give him praise wherever you are. Oh, hallelujah. That praise may make the difference. Thank you, Lord. 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 I bless you right now. Woo. I love you, Lord. I thank you and I bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, put those hands together. Wherever you are, put those hands together. In the prisons, in the behind the sick rooms and walls, give God praise wherever you are. I promise you, he'll come wherever you are. Praise God. Thank you so very much. Appreciate musicians. Thank God for y'all really do. Don't ever want y'all to think I take you for crank, uh, grit, uh, for granted. Thank you so very much for braving this weather and making sure that your pastor has some help and to our assistant pastors and our social elders. Thank you guys so very much. And, um, and to evangelists, I heard the prayer. I was, uh, I was leaning, holding on to the prayer and the song, and I was really, really touched and moved and, and helped along the way uh, to our um, staffers who came today, the, uh, the court, Courtney, uh, Garrett and the Emily Garrett and or, or other words the Garrett girls are here today uh, working the video system as well as Brio, uh, Gabriel Ward. Thank you so very much. I have a team of deacons who are here today. They are representing to make sure that we're safe and, and comfortable and um, thank you all. They are, some are out, some are in, but thank you so very much. And um, and last, last but not least, Lady Sandra, I ask you. Good to see you here. I, I tell you off the broadcast, 
careful what she did, but she, she, she brought the big dogs today. She wore the big dog today. I said, all right, you've been praying for this cold front. She came on out with us. Oh, my God, she brought it on. I said, okay, so this is what we've been waiting on. Um, but uh, I, I'm thankful every last one of you. Appreciate uh, God for all of you. Um, how many of you had problems getting here? Are y'all okay? Y'all, the Lord made a way? All right. All right. In Arlington, is Arlington all right, Pastor David? It's all right. The side streets? The messed up of you here. Margaret over there, the water across that river, is it okay? It's side streets or highways. Be careful on your way back. We got a few more days of this because the ice has to melt. So be, uh, be, be as careful as, as you can and let the Lord uh, lead you on how to get to and fro. I, I, I prayed this morning, and I was asking God to give me a message uh, that would benefit not only uh, people who are in trouble, but people who came for a sense word. And it pulled me off the track of our theme for this year. The theme for this year is preparing for his return, preparing for his return return, found in Matthew chapter 25. First dealing, the early verses of Matthew chapter 25, deals with 10 virgins, five wise and five foolish. Let me introduce my text because I'm really going to uh, teach more than anything today. Um, defining the new me, defining the new me. Amen. Can you say defining the new me? Even on uh, Facebook and YouTube, our YouTube listeners, uh, my son always listens, Gregor Martin Askew Jr., and others listen faithfully on YouTube. Just whisper that out, defining the new me. Now, our theme for this year, of course, is preparing for his return. There are so many things that are pointing to his imminent return. There are so many things that are telling us that the way this world is going is not sustainable. There's no way crime can continually go up and, and nothing changes. There's no way that our political climate is going to continue to get worse and worse and there's no change. At some point, there's going to be a nuclear war, and maybe within the next few, three or four years, according to who we put in office. But it is obvious uh, that Korea, uh, North Korea hates America. Uh, Chinese hates America. Japan hates America. Iran hates America. Everybody who has nuclear war technology hates the United States of America. Uh, if you read in Revelation, and those with understanding, and this is not a criti criticism, but this is a reality. When you read in Revelation, uh, there is one entity that is represented who is considered the United States of America. All scholars agree to this, that the great white whore, or Babylon, the new Babylon, it's the United States of America in the revelations of John. All scholars, this is not your pastor, but all scholars agree to the fact that when it speaks of the great whore or the, uh, or the new Babylon, it is talking about the United States and how the nations rose up to go to war against her. If you believe in Bible prophecy, that's got to happen. And I believe in Bible prophecies. All of these things are culminating to one point, that before the tribulation, his return is imminent. Now, there is arguments about who will be saved after the tribulation began, after, his, after the rapture, uh, whether there will be 144,000 who will be saved following. Uh, the scripture says that they were pure Jews, 144,000. Uh, Y'all been reading your Bible? And the 144,000 Jews that will be saved uh, after the rapture during the tribulation, uh, if, you're, if you're keen to the fact that we have been grafted in, Paul calls us the ones who have been grafted in. We are not the original blood, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, we were grafted into the natural branch. And no matter how you put it, we are not all natural Jews. We've been grafted in. But Revelation talks about 144,000 Jews, not the general population who will be saved. 
I don't know um, whether it would be 144 actual Jews or Jew bloodline or whatever. All I know is you need to catch the first train. <laughs> don't you wait on that second train. I mean, I'm waiting for this to turn and after the, you don't know what's going to happen after. But there was a number that John said that was praising God, a number that no man could number. And I hope you're part of that number. So then when we prepare for his return, consider what Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 25. And he is talking about 10 virgins, five wise, five foolish, five who were prepared for whatever was to happen. And that was for the bridegroom to come. If he came early, they were ready. If he came later, they were ready. But five foolish had just enough uh, for just a couple of hours of lit oil. And that day, they didn't have uh, flashlights. They didn't have lights. And uh, back in that day, if you married somebody and you didn't know how they looked the, the night that you married them, when you wake up in the morning, they still yours. That's what happened to... Uh, to Jacob. Jacob was a trist, trickster. Y'all remember that? And he tricked around and tricked around until he ran into a guy named Laban. And Laban had two daughters. One was very beautiful. The other one was opposite of beautiful. And everybody wanted uh, Rachel. Uh, nobody, nobody wanted Leah. But there was a marriage festival. And evidently they didn't have oil in their lights, in their lamps. And when he woke up, instead of him having Rachel, he had tender-eyed Leah, and he realized he had got tricked, and he had to work another seven years to have both of those wives, Rachel and Leah. So it was dangerous, brothers, not to have, not to have a light on. So what happened was the five wives ran out of oil, and when they ran out of oil, unfortunately, the bridegroom came, and when he came, he only got the ones that, that were there that he could see, and that was the five who had oil in their lamps that was burning. When uh, the five foolish came back, they found out they were left. That is the sum of the first part of, uh, of Matthew chapter 25. The summary of the second part is that there was this king who, had, um, who had, was given out rewards for people who were servants, and he gave out those individuals who visit the sick, who clothe the hungry, who uh, fed the hungry, who clothe the naked, rather, who visited those in jail. And when those people that he was rewarding asked the question, when did we see you sick, naked, hungry? When did we see you uh, in distress? When did we see you and help you? And the king said, when you did it to the least of them, you did it to me. On the same side, those were the sheep. On the other side were the goats that he separated. And they asked the same question. Why are we being separated? Why are we being cast out? Why are we being thrown away? And the king said that when I was naked, you did not feed me. I mean, when I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was outdoors, you did not bring me in. When I was in prison, you did not visit me. And when saw we? When did we see you in these positions? He said, when you did not do it to the least, you did not do it to me. We got to prepare. We got to win souls. Our job is to give this life, uh, life-giving word to people who are broken. It is so easy. And when you allow God to touch your heart, to do things that causes transformation in people's lives, he gives you the necessary energy that it takes to complete the journey. Lady Askew has a prayer uh, ministry that she prays for mostly family and then others who have joined in. And I imagine that some, some mornings at 6 a.m. and the mornings that she get up to pray, I imagine that there are some times that she does not want to because uh, sleep gets good when you have an assignment. It gets real, real good. But somehow she's up praying because God will give you the energy necessary to fulfill the ministry that he's put in your spirit. Am I right, y'all? I spoke of later ask you, there are others who have ministered. Sister Teresa Jackson has ministered where uh, she helped clothe people, shoes, used to do shoes. Now it's a help ministry. It's a upbuilding ministry. 
And many times when you're worn out and you think that it's all over, somehow God gives you the inspiration to keep on going. He refreshes you. He flips the script and gives you new inspiration. That's because you have it in you to do those things that the Lord has put in your heart. Amen? And so we have to learn that there are some things that we must do as Christians, as saints, as believers, that enhance people's lives. You will be surprised a little bit that you do how far it goes in ministering to people who are broken. I, I know that uh, they know that we go to church. I know that. But there is an extension of us that goes out when we help people. We impart to them that extra dollar that you have, that extra five. And when you see somebody who has need, you bless them. It is God putting it in you to do those things. That's what John, 1 John or 2 John tells us, that whoso has this world's good and seed his brother hath need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion, how dwelleth the love of God in him? If you really love God, when you see people who are hurting, you just can't just walk by. Even if it's just something as simple as whispering a prayer. I found out that there's many accidents as I drive by, and if y'all drive, y'all see a lot of accidents in Memphis, Tennessee. But when I see the accidents, there are some I may stop. Most of them I just drive by and say, Lord, give them peace. Lord, protect the saints. Lord, save those who need to be saved. Lord, deliver. Because I can't stop, but I can give something. I can impart something. I can speak the blood of Jesus. I can cover them in prayer. So then he tells us that there are duties and responsibilities for us who are believers. Can I hear you say that? There are duties and responsibilities for us who are believers. It's not just coming to church. It's not just with you who are watching on Facebook and YouTube, just watching and enjoying a good message. But it's more. It, it is impartation. It is extending yourselves. It is coming out when others won't come out. It is pouring into people who you may not get it back, and the reward is not instantaneously, but the reward is sure. Amen? So if you're not in this posture, or if there's another place that God is really pulling you to, it is time to redefine yourself. It is time to say, God, I am willing and I'm ready to be used by you. I'm offering myself to give my life as a living sacrifice that would enhance the body and the kingdom of God. Pastor, where does that come from? Uh, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And, and when we read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it's, it's very obvious that most of us who are saved and believers know this scripture here. Therefore, at verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away, and behold, rather, all things are become new. Let's look at that now. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Lead that version up, the American Standard Version up, uh, Sister Emily, and that's a good version. Wherefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, they are become new. We, uh, we, we pull that pa passage of scripture to the side. And we don't include all the other stuff that comes with this passage of scripture. I know that when I got saved, and I share this often because it is my heritage. I was at the New First Baptist Church where my father was, uh, the pastor. He served for 48 years as pastor of that church. And he uh, came over to Jubilee once he uh, retired and sat back uh, right Back there in the back to my right, 
I believe that if that's El Sturdivant right back on that area, he sat back there for three years, two to three years before he passed away. But he was faithful in what he was doing. In the early years of his ministry, we had revivals specifically to get people saved. And so in the Baptist church, you had the mornings, mourners bench with those who are uh, candidates for uh, salvation and baptism. Uh, and if you got saved that week, baptism would come uh, the week following. I was on the mourners bench, sitting on that bench, waiting on the, the change to take place. And, and, and this is the honest truth. I thought I was going to hear cymbals, bangs, a band playing, Jesus coming out the sky. When people say, I, I, I see the light, I believe. They said, do you see the light? And Monday, I did not see a light. Everybody was receiving. It was a lot of them. They got saved. Tuesday, a lot of them, I see the light. I ain't seen no light. I'm looking for a light. I don't see no light. And, I, and, every, and, and you know, after about Wednesday, it gets embarrassing. You're the last one on there. And people start thinking, you, maybe you're a little bit slow. You ain't going to get this Jesus because you're not as quick as everybody else. So about Thursday, when Thursday came, that's when I said, Lord, if you're real, I need to know. I don't want to be up here by myself, but I'm not going to move until I know you're real. And I promise you, my heart opened. While the preacher was preaching, I saw illuminated light around him. It clicked. I received it. And I got saved on that Thursday night. A few days later, I was baptized um, in a church that did not have a heated pool. And it was in the winter. And when they say that song, it cheered my body, but not my soul, it chilled everything. My hair was cold. Everything in me was cold when they dipped that water. But I knew that that was the right thing to do, and, and I got baptized uh, on that winter day in that cold pool, inside pool. I saw the light. I received Jesus. I became a new creature. Now, the new creature has nothing to do with the physical outward appearance because my visage, other than maybe illumination of the glory of God, had not changed. My facial features, nose was still the same, lips were still the same, hair was still the same. But the new creation or the new creature was an inside job. It was not an outside job. That's why the old saints used to sing a song Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. So what happens is a lot of people think everything about me is going to change when I get Jesus. No, the transformation takes place in the spirit realm, in the inner person. What causes the outer person to work is the inner person. What causes the external to work is the inside. So when he changes your heart, then your desires change and your activities change because your body is following the spirit inside. We are a soul. The spirit is what we take hold of and the body is from the ground. When we die, the, the scripture says that uh, the earth, the body goes back to the earth the soul and the spirit to God who gave it. So understand now, the change was not necessarily an outward change. The activities that, that this body did changed because the inside man now had a God and presence inside of him and God was speaking to him to make better choices. Can somebody say amen? So therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The all things that have become new is not necessarily the physical body. I know of cases where people, when they got saved, God regenerated their body. And whereas they only had just a few days or months to live, when they got saved and when they got it right, God extended their days uh, to years. There's a young man uh, named uh, Martin Rogers, and he came very ill. His, uh, his wife brought him to church, 
And here's a man who did not believe in church, did not believe in preachers. He openly stated, I don't believe in preachers. I don't believe in church. But Sister Rogers compelled him to come one day. And out of all the people, while I was ministering, who were in the congregation at that time, I saw him. And I went out, don't usually do it, but I went out into the aisle and pulled him out. I said, there's something going on in your body. I, I spoke in his ear. There's something going on in your body. Of course, it was obvious that he was afflicted, and, and it was obvious that he was sick. But the Spirit of God was really ministering to me, tell, telling me to tell him, and they said, you don't have long. He started crying. I said, but God is going to extend your days. He had a liver, some kind of condition that he was dying of. And all of a sudden, when he received Jesus, God extended his days. He got better. He got stronger. And for the balance of the years that he was here, he served faithfully. So there is sometimes physical manifestations of the inward receptivity of Jesus Christ. There are times when people get saved and not only does it regenerate their spirit, but it regenerates their body as well. But there are other cases where people, when they get saved, that is all that God has designed for them, and it's time for them to go. Pastor, do you have any kind of uh, example? Yeah, the thief on the cross. He got saved. He was a new creature, new creation. But the penalty of the sin that he, he did still had to be paid. And he still died on the cross, even though once that sinner uh, was on the right hand of Jesus Christ, when he was dying and saw Jesus die, the other, other prisoner on the other side of the cross, there were three people on the cross, Jesus in the middle. One of them was saying, if you're really the Christ, come down, save yourself and save me too. But the other one said, man, why are you talking to him like that? We are here because of stuff we've done. This man has done nothing wrong. And for a moment, all the criminal activity washed away. He said, I see who Jesus really is. He is the son of God. And he said, man, when you come to your kingdom, I, I realize I I'm messed up. But when you come into your kingdom, will you just remember me? And Jesus said, not only will I remember you, but this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. He did not come down from the cross. He still died, but the genera regeneration of him receiving Jesus caused the spirit man to not to be cast into hell. Praise God. Praise God. So some who make it saved. Your physical body may not change, but the inward man, the real you, the person who lives for eternity, will be in the presence of God. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Sometimes he regenerates the body, sometimes he's not. But when you get saved, you're defining the new you. You're saying now... I dance to a different drum beat. I move to a different voice. I'm led by a different spirit. I'm no longer what I used to be. Now I'm defining who I am or redefining. I'm saying I made Christ my choice. I made him and his decision. Now, while we always get stuck on, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away, all things, behold, all things become new. There's a whole lot of stuff if we didn't read earlier passages. And since it's a cold day outside, I'm going to read some of this stuff. Chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, verse 1 of chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. He's telling you that even if you receive Christ and this earthly tabernacle, the physical house that we live in. Y'all know this is a house, right? Your body is a house. 
Some house is young, some house is not as young, but it is a house. It's where our spirit man lives. When the house is so condemned that the spirit can no longer inhabit it, that's when you die. What causes death is when the spirit leaves the body. What causes the spirit to leave the body? Several things. When the uh, outside is torn, broken, accidents, disease, when the spirit man can no longer live in the house, then comes cessation of breath. That is the definition, the proper definition of death or dying. Cessation of breath, to stop breathing. In reality, to stop doing anything is a sense of death. When divorces take place, divorce is a type of death. It's cessation of a relationship. Uh, there are many types of deaths. So, you know, people who have lost jobs that they have put all their energy into, they'll tell you it's like dying. It's like a death. People who've been married for years and get divorced, they're saying the divorce was like a death because it's the cessation of something. It's the stopping of such, something. So the proper definition of death is cessation of breath. It is understood that this body initially was made to live forever. Do we all agree with that? Before Adam sinned in the garden, the scripture says, for the wages of sin is what? Death. The gift of God is eternal life. But if you flip that over, if you don't sin, you don't die. But because Adam started a sin crusade in our body, and he started the sin process because all men of, of the seed of Adam, out of one man's seed came all, all of us have the sin seed in us. So the wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The glory of God. What is the glory of God? Life eternal. In his presence forever. But we come short of his glory because of the sin nature that we have. Because of this, we die. But the inward man lives forever. Can I hear you say that? The inward man lives forever, which is most important. The body, which was only designed to live for a few years, or the inward man, which never dies because it is a spirit. A spirit never dies. So what's more important is the spirit man, not the outward man. We were made to live forever, but because of the sin of Adam, all men were condemned to death. So then, this passage becomes even more apparent to us with the understanding that the earthly house of this tabernacle is going to be dissolved. But we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We have a spirit. This is still leading up to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now he's telling us the tabernacle were dissolved. There's a house. Let's keep reading a little bit farther down. Uh, let's look at verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. What he's saying now is, he's speaking of the outward body, the building, the tabernacle. Y'all got it? Now he's saying that when that spirit man leaves, he is absent from the body, and then he's present with the Lord. He leaves out of the body absent. The tabernacle is dissolved. He's leaving out of the body, absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. Well, why is it so to be in the presence of the Lord? Well, first of all, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. So remember now, when you're absent from the body, 
He's already prepared you a mansion to stay in. Oh, I thought I was going to get some amens on that one. Amen. When you leave out of the body, the glory is that I'm not just going anywhere, but I'm going before his presence, in his presence is fullness and joy, and in his presence are mansions. And Jesus said, I go and prepare a place. That's a place for me, y'all. Amen. And I love my little house in Milton, but it can't be compared to the mansion that Jesus has for us. Amen. I, I know some of y'all love it. You love your places that you stay in and you're comfortable where you are, but it cannot be compared with the mansion that Jesus has prepared for us in his Father's kingdom. Can somebody give God some praise? Therefore, look at verse 9. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether what? Whether it be good or bad. Well, Pastor... I don't understand. We're going to all stand before the judgment seat. Don't worry about it. We're going to stand before God and be judged. Don't worry about it. Well, why, why shouldn't we worry about it? Well, look at verse 21. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I said, don't worry about it. You covered. Pastor, we got to stand, and, and the good and the bad. Yeah, the good and the bad. All of us, we want to show all the good stuff. You put it on your resume, you don't put nothing that you got fired eight times on your resume, do you? When you are um, preparing to marry somebody, they don't know everything about you. Somebody said, better not. <laughs> they don't know everything about you. They don't know the ups and the downs, and they don't know, they, they don't, you ain't going to tell them. If you want to be married, you ain't going to tell them. You don't know everything about anybody. You only know what they present to you. Am I right? There's no, no, no shame on nobody, y'all. No shame, assistant pastors. I know y'all have been here before with me, but no shame on anybody. But when crisis hit, and I end up going to the houses, I didn't know saints drank so much. Some have the alcohol on the mountain when you walk in. I said, oh my God. <laughs> you don't know everything about people? You don't. They can be clean up in the church and you go to their house and you can't even get through the door. Amen. You don't know what they're going home to. Call it what I call it still the chain. So what happens is we don't know the real us, but Christ knows it. And he said, You're gonna stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and you're gonna be judged according to things that are done in your body, whether it be good or bad. But because the blood of Christ covereth us. John tells us we have perpetuation for our sins. We have somebody who will stand up for us and say they messed up, but they mine. They made some mistakes, but they're mine. They're like the thief on the cross, but they're mine. Oh, praise. Somebody ought to give God some praise, somebody. Hallelujah. So you're going to be judged for the thing. We all want people to think that we've been all this and all that, and, and we have not been all this. And all that. But Christ is all this and all that. And because he's all this and all that, he covereth us and clothed us in his righteousness. Give God some praise, somebody. Okay. So, let's move on with this, and I'm almost through. I'm trying to help you to find a new you. Look at verse 13. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we, this, we thus judge 
that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should, hence, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. In other words, since he paid the price for you, he wants you to live for him. How do we live for him? How do we redefine ourselves and line ourselves up to the word of God? How do we start from scratch from this point in January the 21st, 2024, and say, I'm starting from scratch. Realize that now there's a new creature. You are a new creature. Old things are passed away, and let's start every day as a new challenge to live for God. If you were living in a place of depression, you don't have to be depressed because Christ has wiped that sorrow away. Amen, somebody. If you've been living in your days of yesterday's hurt, and I think Margaret is the Bay Builder group in our bunch. No, Marsha. Marsha is the Bay Builder group of our system pastors. But they're old enough to know. You can get church hurt. People in church can hurt you. But if you're going to move forward, you got to release all of that. If you're going to redefine yourself and say, I'm starting fresh, you can't start fresh with just the base stuff. You have to release those things in order to move forward. I said this last week, in relationships, if you have not resolved your brokenness in your previous, previous relationship, you're going to carry those hurts over to your next relationship. And you're going to find that the common denominator to your broken relationships is not the people, but it's you. Because you keep bringing your brokenness to your next place of residence, and that is supposed to start you new, not old stuff rehashed. I know I'm talking to somebody. So if you're going to redefine yourself, you got to release that stuff. You got to move on, move forward, go forward, press your way, as I said on last week. And Christ, he died for all. Look at verse 16. We're almost through. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. It's not a fleshly connection that changes us. It is a divine spiritual nature that changes us. I can tell every last one of you one thing about you that you have never said to me personally, not all of you. You never told me all your stuff. But since you got saved, you stopped some of it. I'm a prophet. I just called me prophet. I just spoke over you. You never told me all your stuff, but I promise you since in Christ, some of that stuff has dropped off. Because the very nature of Christ himself changes us. And you can try to continue in your stuff, but the conviction of God will be on you. That causes the change in your life. Amen. Somebody ought to give God some praise. That's how it is redefining you. You are allowing God to speak to your heart. Speak to your brokenness. Speak to those things that you're trying to carry over into the new you. And you can't carry them because they were not meant to be in a new chapter of your life. They were meant to be on your yesterday. Stop bringing your yesterday into your tomorrow. Start afresh. Realize that when God makes a promise to you, I, I think about Brother Abner's spirit the other day, just so glad for him. The, the ties have changed and some doors, some big doors are really open. And I can only imagine that there were times when you knew what was in you, but God, you know, 
but God had put it on, on, on hold. And we don't know why God put stuff on hold. Sometimes he's waiting for things to fall in place. Sometimes he's waiting on us so we can handle it. Sometimes those changes, if it takes too much, too, too, too much space out of our life, we alienate those things which are important to us, our family, and we consume ourselves with those things, and we'll lose those things to gain the new stuff. And sometimes God said, no, I need it all together. So he'll hold it back until things line up the way he's designed it. Sean Pace, bless her heart, knew her personally, and she went home to be with the Lord, but she had a song, My Times Are In His Hand. And the gist of her song was, if I was in control of my life, uh, there were so many things that it would not take place. There would be no hurt, no harm, no disappointment. All those things, former things, wouldn't be. And, but then she sums up the song to say, but my times are in his hand. That he knows what it takes to bring out the rich treasures out of me. The fires, the, the hurt, the wounds. And when, I'm, when I process it properly, it redefines me. And if I do it right, it makes a better me. Amen. I talked to a, a, a couple that had both had been divorced before. Uh, and when I talk with them, my conversation generally, Pastor Burgess does most of that now, but my conversation is generally, from the last relationship, did you learn anything? And 99% of the time, they say they did. Most of the time, it's on the male end. He'll say, yeah, I, I, I didn't handle this right, I didn't do this right. Because if you don't understand what you did wrong, you won't know how to bring forth the new you into the other one. So you got to know yourself. You got to own up to who you are. And when you're redefining yourself and going into another relationship, there must be clarity that I have changed, that I am a different person, that those mistakes of yesterday are no longer part of my walk with Christ. Amen? Let's finish this a little bit out. Look at verse 19. Well, 18 is good, too. And all things are God, of God, who had reconciled, brought back us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of bringing us back. A reconciliation, a connecting us back with God. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing or not putting their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled, reconciled to God. And that's the scripture I just got to read to you. He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made to become the righteousness of God. So I'm committed myself that this year I'm going to be better. Can you commit to that this year? Can you put it in the atmosphere? This year, Lord, I'm going to be better. As we redefine who we are, let's make sure that the root core is based on the word of God. Not on social media, not on TikTok, not on Instagram, but it's based on the word of God. Let's give God some praise for his word today. Come on, we can do better than that. As you stand on your feet today and wherever you are, I want you to get into a posture of acceptance and obedience on Facebook and YouTube where you're willing to say, God, I'm looking for a better me this year. I know many people don't believe in New Year's resolution, but if you don't set any kind of goal, you're going to be in the same place next year as you are today. 
So I want you to say that I'm going to be better today than I was yesterday. Lord, be creative in my spirit. Let me become who I need to be for you to minister to people who are hurting. Let me be the one that you have incarnated in a person and come to me and say, I'm hungry. And let me be the one that say, I don't know if it's God, but I know if it's God, but it's God's work. And I got to do something for you. Redefine yourself in such a way that when you see people who are in need, in your mind say, it could be Christ. Let me do what I can for them. Lord, I thank you right now for your word and I thank you for helping us to redefine ourselves. For if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Let that new creature, creation, engulf us and cause us to be better. Bind every spirit that hinders us from the change that is necessary for regeneration. And let us touch the life that has been assigned to our hands. We bless you right now. Go into the media world, Facebook, live stream, YouTube, YesLordRadio.com. Touch those who are watching. Give them the earnest of your word and cause their lives to be changed. Where there's places of hopelessness, the spirit of low self-esteem and depression, God, you help right now and lift up every bow down head. I thank you, Father, that you're touching and you're ministering right now. In the name of Jesus, you use us to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you leave today and before we close this off, if there's anyone who needs to be saved, it's as simple as accepting Christ in your heart and opening your mouth with confession. People make it hard, but it's not hard because the change is not you. The change is Christ. And he makes the necessary change. So if you're ready, I need those of you who are contemplating suicide. That's not the answer. It's a permanent decision for temporary problems. You're making a conclusion on your life according to what's going on right now. But there's some more things God has for you. You're going to bless your family, but you got to live to see that take place. So if you're ready, just say, I receive Jesus Christ. You've almost said everything you need to say, but I like to put it and make it personal. Just say, Lord, save me. And if you believe those things that you just spoke, you're saved right now. Let's give God some praise, everybody. <laughs> praise God. Oh, I felt the change in somebody today. Get with the Bible believing church. There's some things God's going to do for you, but you got to grow in Him. If there's no church in your area, feel free to connect with us at your next earliest convenience. We have archived messages, and we have fresh messages on Bible study on Wednesday, and every Sunday the Lord gives us grace. This is Pastor Askew. We love your support. Uh, Sister Emily is going to show our ways to give, uh, add, and all you do is click on that, and you'll go right to us. But this is Pastor Askew, and I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm looking for God to touch you in a mighty way and continue to bless you. Until our next broadcast. Please be seated. Jesus, Jesus, and you are God, God. Yes, you are, yes, you are. 
One more time from the top. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. At the mention of your name, every knee, knee shall bow and tongue proclaim Jesus, Jesus. You are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Yes, you are, yes, you are. Jesus, Jesus, my Jesus, at the mention of your name, every knee, knee shall bow and tongue proclaim, Jesus, my, 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 my Jesus. You are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Come on, let's give God praise, everybody. Praise God, everybody. Now, I don't want you to get so excited where you jump in your car and you just enthuse and rip off this lot. We still got ice. We still got stuff out there, so be real careful. Sister Lisa's getting herself in position for those who like to give by way of debit card. Sister Shalonda Elliott is in the house, and she is making her way uh, up to the front with the Delta Walk. And thank you, Sister Lisa Evangelist. Appreciate you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Emily, for putting that up. If you, if you scan that, you'll go directly to a place where all you got to do is press some buttons, and it'll be part of our giving process. Anybody that like to give through... Shalanda or Sister Lisa. Praise God. Amen. Brother Harmon, did you have to go to work this week? <laughs> Busy work. Yeah, 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 I can only imagine. Lacky, were you out there, brother? You got to pay you the bills, don't you? Devin, your student, enjoy it while you can. <laughs> I'll be talking with my grandbaby, uh, Pastor Margaret, and he just wants everything now. You know, just, I want it now. And, and I, I am so touched because I said, boy, you just don't realize, when you're just trying to grow up real fast. When you grow up, life, life changes. Everything is paid right now. You need to enjoy it right now. But we've had a wonderful week at home and. Uh, and the Lord blessed us just to enjoy uh, some relaxation times. And I hope you guys have done it too. Well, Jackson, you've been enjoying and relaxing as much as possible. <laughs> enjoying the time with you. You've been, who been cooking every day? You've been cooking every day? All right. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I've been eating every day. Lady Askew been doing her, she's doing her best work. She started flipping stuff in that kitchen. I said, it's been a long time since this house smelled like this. But she, you know, she cooked it up and Sylvia cooked one night. And I said, you cook more than one night? This is 2024, ain't it? It's, a, it's been a great change. For a long time, Sylvia was the only daughter who couldn't cook. And uh, she got married, and man, she, she trying to keep that man. <laughs> Is he know how to cook? All right. She talking bold. He's not here today. She talking real bold. He know how to cook. All right. Huh? Yeah, he cooks. He cooked this week as well. Right. Bless you, my sister. How you doing? Thank you for coming. Appreciate you guys today, and uh, thank, keep us in your prayers, and um, thank you for your finances. I know that many of you have already given, and I appreciate it. Be safe coming off the lot. 
If I can keep have a couple of deacons to help us lock this place up, it'll be great. Next week, I believe we have, I believe we have the uh, district meeting at 4, 4 p.m., 3 or 4 p.m. I'll let you know earlier. So be prepared to come back next Sunday evening for our first district meeting of 2024 with our U.E. Miller district churches. And of course, we're going to need musicians and our choir representatives as well. All right, who's in charge? And we're going to close it out. Yes, pray for my traveling grace. I will be going to the leadership conference uh, in Atlanta, Georgia for, amen, for the next few days. And just pray pray that God keep the planes in the air and land properly and bring, bring me back home. And, and he keeps us safe while in Atlanta. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, uh, hand praise for the word. Defining a new me. That means we're going to rediscover ourselves in a different way in God. And how can I do better? Have everyone has given their offering? You can line up and come from the back or however we're going to dismiss ourselves from your pews. But those who have offering to bring, you can bring it to Deacon Jackson at this time. We thank God for our pastor. Come on, let's give him a hand praise. We thank God for him being concerned about the saints, making sure we are good, and we thank him. And we ask God to continue to strengthen him and keep him, him and Lady Askew also. With our offerings lifted up, Lord, we thank you for those who are giving on this morning. God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you bless those also who have given on Giblify, Cash App, and Zale, God. Let the offering meet the needs of this ministry, God, in the name of Jesus. And then bless our homes. Let, don't let us have any lack, God. In the name of Jesus, bless us in abundance, God. Rebuke foreclosure, God. Repossessions, God, in the name of Jesus. Give us favor, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And then, God, we ask that as we leave this place and never from your presence, give put a hedge of protection around us on these streets, God. Watch over us, God, in the name of Jesus. And the saints who don't have power, bless them. And the saints that are having problems with bursted pipes, God, bless them in the name of Jesus. But, God, we thank you for your traveling mercies. Keep a hedge of protection around our pastor as he travels to Atlanta, God. Bless Bishop Boehner and the saints that are traveling. God, we thank you for the victory, and we thank you for everything you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>